for inviting me and thank you for arranging this wonderful event. It's always a joy and a privilege to speak up for Israel. I bring with me greetings from Norway, where we see a steady growth of support for Israel. Our organization Myth Med Israel for Fred with Israel for Peace is now the biggest non-religious and political independent pro-Israel organization in Norway. We are soon 11,000 due-paying members. Our goal is, through factual and comprehensive information about Israel, the Jewish people and the Middle East, we seek to create a deeper and greater sympathy for Israel and the Jewish people. Through our webpage, with more than 130,000 visitors last month and the books and magazines we publish, we try to bring the Israeli perspective in a public discourse. We're also a watchdog and corrects both media and politicians when they are biased against Israel. Uh, I, don't, I don't tell this to boast about us, but to encourage you that it is useful to speak up against anti-Israel bias and to stand up for Israel in the public debate. More and more often we experience that media, our government and other politicians um, look to our organization to hear the Israeli perspective. <coughs> and just to illustrate, one month ago I participated in a debate on the Norwegian Broadcasting Corporation against the leader of BDS Norway, and you know BDS that stands for Boycott, Divestment, Sanctions. He was arguing for a boycott of Israeli wine produced on the Golan Heights because Golan Heights winery, who produce wonderful tasty wine, is located outside the so-called 1967 borders. Uh, first, let me tell you, there are no such things as the 1967 borders. What? What politicians call the 67 borders is actually the 1949 armistice line. And the Arab countries argued that these lines should not in any matter be considered as political or geographical borders. Do you know why? Because then the Arab world would have to accept Israel as a legitimate state with legitimate borders. And that is the core of the conflict the Arab and Muslim world's rejection of a Jewish state, no matter how small. If Israel could shrink to be down to the size of only Tel Aviv, it would still be too much. So, well, I told the radio listeners that in Israel they have been producing wine since biblical days, including on the Golan Heights, and if Israel should accept the insane demands from the United Nations to withdraw completely from the Golan Heights and to the so-called 67 borders, which actually is more, it's more correct to say suicide borders or Auschwitz borders, that would mean bringing both uh, Assad's regime, uh, ISIS, Al-Nusra and about 60 other competing armed groups all down to the lake Kinre, uh, called Genesra Shön, you know, and which would bring the civil war to the city of Tiberias and large parts of the Galilee. And I can't see why the United Nations should want to expand the territories of one of the, wor one of the world's most failed states at the expense of the only well-functioning liberal democracy in the Middle East. Israeli controlled Golan Heights, there are beautiful wine yards and agricultural land, but on the Syrian side you will see death and destruction. So why, which side do you choose? You must remember that the United Nations is not a high moral judge. It is in fact an organization highly biased towards Israel, which turns a blind eye to the breaches of human rights from the Arab and Muslim world and concentrates much of its effort to condemn the only democracy in the Middle East. So why should you support Israel? Well, because it's a moral thing to do. And you people, you are, you are here. You are on the right side of the moral fence. Finally, let me give you three important facts which you can bring with you today and which is easy to remember. Number one, there is only one state in the whole world with a Jewish majority and identity, Israel. 
the same time, there are 22 Arab states and 57 Muslim states. The Palestinian authorities define themselves as both Arab and Muslim. The Palestinian Authority, at the same time, they refuse to accept Israel as a Jewish state. So this kind of hypocrisy is a big hindrance to peace, more than anything else. So, only one Jewish state. Number two, the Jews represented about 2% of the entire population in the Arab world at the time when Israel was established. The area which was given to Israel was less than 02 of the Arab area where Jews lived inside. After 1948, about 1 million Jews was displaced and had to flee the Arab world, and today almost no Jews are left behind in the Arab world. Israel is now a safe haven for most of the Jews from the Middle East. And number three, 3%. 3%, three that is the area which the Israeli settlements are covering on the West Bank, the historical Judean Samaria. Only 3%. When you listen to the media, you should think that they almost had all of it. It's only 3%. Settlements, only 3%. The very same day that Palestinians are willing to accept the Jewish state, it will be possible to find a solution which can clarify the final borders. Until now, the Palestinian authorities have declined the solution with two states as long as one of them is to become a Jewish state. So this is why you need to rise up and take a stand for the only true democracy in the Middle East, for the only Jewish state in the world, Israel. Thank you very much. Hello. Hey. <laughs> Thank you for inviting me to speak here. I have to say, I, I feel so good to see all the support Israel is getting here. It's just amazing. It's warm my heart. My name is Ashage. I'm 27 years old, and I'm an Israeli. <laughs> I serve as an officer in the Israeli Defense Force. I believe in the Zionist dream. I am a result of the Zionist dream. My family came from Ethiopia. For many, many years in Ethiopia, the Jews of Ethiopia were yearning for Zion. They were yearning for Israel. For many years, the Jews were suffering, they were persecuted just for being Jews. They were demanded to become Christians. They were suffering every single day. In 1991, my parents have decided to make a stop to all of this. They decided to be a part of the Zionist stream and come an immigrant to Israel. And this road, they risked their life. It was long and hard. But they did everything in order to come back home, come to Israel, to the Jewish state. During this road, they have suffered toward men and nature. But they did everything and they succeeded. They succeeded to get to the Jewish state, Israel. I was born there. I was born in the way to Israel. I grew up in Israel, and I'm proud to say that I'm Israeli. My parents, Adana and Tezalo, I fought to get to where I am today. They reach a developed country, a strong country, a country where Jews can be themselves. My parents struggle to learn Hebrew, to understand the different culture. They, start, they struggle to integrate to the Jewish society. For 26 years, they fought in order to find their way to get accustomed to the Israeli culture, to the Israeli country, a country that wasn't ready to deal with their needs. For years, my parents have dedicated themselves 
put an effort and energy and money to make sure that we and me and my sibling could be a part of this dream. But not only be a part of the Israeli society, to be a strong and successful part of it. I'm glad and honored to stand here today in front of you as an integral part of the Israeli society, as a proud Israeli. Israel today is one of the most successful countries around the world. In only 70 years, we succeeded to build a country. We succeeded to provide metas to create drinkable waters. We succeeded to plant trees in the desert. Israel has a lot of success. But in the same time, there is a, uh, there is a lot of social issues. The social issues were always complicated. The Ethiopian immigration found themselves struggling to be a part of the Israeli society. A society was mostly white and Middle Eastern. Many people were influenced by racism and prejudice. People who were, were narrow-minded, did they believe they are, I'm inferior just for my color. But I didn't let them get to me. I knew I belong to the Jewish people. I knew. I knew I am a part of the Zionist dream. I knew I'm at least as good as they are. I knew I have the same right. but I was less privileged than them. I proved them wrong. I work hard and achieve every single goal that I had. Today, I'm standing here in front of you as an IDF officer in the reserves, as a strong, independent career woman who is honored to represent Israel here in Sweden and around the world. I am a soldier in the army of peace, said the late Prime Minister Isaac Rabin. I am, ladies and gentlemen, are a soldier of the army of the State of Israel. I'm here to support Israel and the Jewish people. I'm here to say no to anti-Semitic, to say no to xenophobia, say no to racism. I'm here to promote a cause who bring light and inspiration to the world. I'm here to support Israel. Israel has a long way to go. Every day we face new challenges, be it on the social issue, in the security threat, or in the economic issue. There are flaws in every country, but Israel is the only country we have, so we have to support it. We can't let anyone deny our right to exist. We have to stand together, stand strong with Israel. Thank you very much.